A drought can be a great time to look at the structures in a pond to see what needs to be repaired. We should really be looking at structures all the time, but we don't usually think about it. But now that the pond levels are down, uh, people are thinking about doing things like removing the silt that's washed in over many years. And this is usually a no-brainer. If it's affordable to get in and get that silt out, it's probably a good thing to do. But we need to take care with how we handle the silt afterwards. It needs to be sloped away from the pond and vegetated as quickly as possible. The silt is easily erodible and you don't want it just washing back into the pond. Another thing that people think about doing is deepening the pond uh, even more than it was uh, originally to have a greater storage capacity. This can be a good idea or perhaps it's a waste of time. It really depends on the particular pond and the watershed. That's why I advise everyone to talk with their Natural Resource Conservation Service to see whether, in their opinion, the watershed is going to be able to supply enough water to fill that extra storage capacity. An area of the pond that is, is not so obvious that may be in need of repair are the shorelines. If you have a lot of shallow areas that are weedy along the edges of your pond, you might consider taking advantage of the low water levels to uh, excavate those areas and to reestablish some healthy three to one slopes. It's oftentimes the case that uh, a pond will over time just gradually will slump uh, due to the effects of gravity and it's a normal maintenance procedure to go in there and reshape those uh, shorelines. Another area uh, to think about is uh, the effects of cattle on your pond. If you have a lot of livestock traffic in and out of the pond all day, that is almost always going to shallow out the areas and you might give some consideration to possibly fencing the pond to reduce or totally eliminate cattle access to the pond. Now I realize that most of our ponds were built to water cattle, so I'm not saying uh, something that's uh, too crazy here. What I'm suggesting is that you're, there are a couple of options for watering the cattle if you're going to fence your pond. One is to leave an access point where the cattle can get in and out just at one point. Uh, another approach is to totally fence the pond and install a freeze-proof watering trough below the dam. This is more expensive, but uh, if it's feasible to do so, it's really the best approach because when we get into one of our really cold winters every 10 years or so and we get ice cover, this is going to prevent you from having to get out and chop ice and it's going to eliminate the possibility of, your, of a cow falling through the ice and save you some money in that regard. And the third area, of course, uh, is the dam. Uh, we need to be looking at dams all the time, but now that the water level is down, uh, it, it's good to look for animal burrowing damage, surface erosion, perhaps uh, any kind of slumping, or any trees that might be uh, starting to grow on the dam. These are things that you don't want on your dam, and uh, if you ignore them year after year, you can get into some serious problems and even a failure of the dam. So if you see any of these things, again, I would suggest talking to the Natural Resource Conservation Service, getting their expert opinion on how to correct it, whether it's feasible to correct or not. Sometimes it's not. But uh, this is an opportunity where you could perhaps get equipment in to do things if there's something that needs to be done. If you do these three things, I think you'll end up with a pond that's better than you had before the drought.